Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. This is our second episode of the new series, our review roundup. And we have three more quick reviews for you. I know you're probably sick of us saying it, but we are giving away Punch Club in, well, the next couple of weeks. Make sure you're active on the channel, leave a comment down below and let us know if you like this new format. Our first review then is the game Pode. Now Pode is a nice idea to have a puzzle game that relies on cooperation as its core mechanic. And to be fair, when the game is played with a friend, it's quite a delightful puzzler. So for Billy No Mates, is this a game worth picking up? Let's find out. The game allows you to control one of two characters, a rock and a fallen star. You solve environmental puzzles from simplistic push block A to space B to the more complex solving mechanisms that require you to find the information in the world around you. Some of the puzzles are more platform based, which use the rock to boost the star to high platforms and hold down buttons with its heavier weight. The star can bring life to the world around him, which not only looks beautiful, but can also unlock platforms to aid progression. I found the two characters charming, but the whole system for a single player was a little clunky. The movements were too slow for my liking, but overall the gameplay was enjoyable, albeit a little repetitive. I had much more fun with the second person as the game was intended. This really was meant to be played with a friend. The music is nice in Pode, atmospheric and it fits perfectly with the aesthetic they've chosen. I found the sound effects equally fitting and overall the audio on offer just felt right. There are times where the game can feel a touch quiet but this only serves to emphasize the music more when it's playing. The game looks lovely, inspired as it is by the Norwegian art and nature, with a real juxtaposition between light and dark. I love this style and it runs nice and smoothly docked and in handheld mode. The darker sections are always brought to life using the star's mechanic of seeding life around him. I love that and it meant that an area that starts out drab could end up looking stunning. Now the game retails at £22.49 or $24.99. I think we'll have to coin a new phrase. Other than switch tax, maybe we'll call it the Brit tax, as once again we're getting the short straw. The price however is fair overall, and there are a few games which offer a similar experience on Switch. If you're a fan of a more relaxed pace and have a friend or partner with a like mind, this is definitely worth a punt. Just consider there are other co-op games at a similar or slightly lower price, such as Overcooked 1 for example at £17.99, but that is a very different experience and this offers a unique world with a quirky story that I enjoyed playing. Overall then, Pode has an interesting concept that is also ironically its greatest weakness. In single player, it just isn't nearly as fun. It has a lovely atmosphere and some nice puzzles but didn't quite reach the stellar heights it could have. Still, it scores a very respectable 76%. This next game is a little bit more retro. Express it's Raider. called Express Raider. Express Raider has an interesting concept. You must traverse along the top of a train, defeating foes along the way, before making it to the front cart where you can steal the loot being stashed there. Once you've done this, you move on to the next stage. Each train car is a separate screen and acts as a checkpoint of sorts. Lose a life on an enemy and you will start back at the screen fighting that enemy rather than back at the start of the train. Combat is handled in an interesting way as well. Rather than have a life bar as such, you and your enemy share one. The bar tilts one way and the other as you each hit each other, almost like the rope in a tug of war. And the winner of the duel is the one that fills the bar first. Later stages see you riding on horseback and shooting enemies that are on a train. Graphics, although quite dated, the game did release in 1986 after all, 
have some nice animation. I enjoyed the movements of the horse and little details such as clothing blowing in the wind and there is some nice looking parallel scrolling in the background. It won't blow anyone away these days but I do enjoy the journey through time that these Johnny Turbo arcade games take you on from one release to the next. The music is suitably Wild West sounding and serves its purpose of enhancing the gameplay experience implicitly. The biggest issue with the game is how temperamental the controls can be and I'm referring particularly to the jump mechanic here. There's no jump button, with jumping being dealt with by pressing up in the D-pad, much like in a 2D fighting game. In the footage I'm showing here, I'm attempting to jump for approximately 75% of the time. It seems really random as to when the jump actually comes off. I'm assuming that you need to have fully landed before you can jump again, which is fair enough, but the time it takes for this to happen makes it extremely difficult to get your attacks in and costs you a life more often than not. The horse riding sections are quite difficult to control, especially when it comes to moving the horse backwards. I do appreciate that moving a horse backwards would be very difficult in real life, by the way, but you move so slowly at these times on screen that, again, sometimes death almost seems inevitable. The game is currently only available in the USA and it retails at $6.99. Express Raider presents a unique, albeit flawed, experience on Nintendo Switch. Its gameplay merges 2D beat-em-up action with gallery shooting and can be a fun game to jump in and out of every so often. Levels repeat but get progressively harder and you can attempt to beat your high scores each time. If you're not into high score chasing games, you'll probably find the gameplay gets repetitive fairly quickly. Express Raider gets a Switch Up score of 59%. Next up we have Luminaires. Now I'm sure a fair few of you will be familiar with this particular game as it was originally released on the PSP back in 2005. For those of you that are less familiar, Luminaires is a puzzle game that sees 2x2 two two squares made from two different colours fall from the top of the screen. Your objective is to fit at least four blocks of the same colour together. Whilst you're doing this, a timeline which moves in time with the beat of the music sweeps across the screen and clears any of these blocks that you've made. The more blocks you have assembled, the higher your score. Luminez is quite unique in that you use the full length of the screen, as opposed to a vertical column such as in games like Tetris and Puyo Puyo. Whilst this gives you more scope in terms of where you can drop blocks, it also means a larger playing area for you to keep an eye over and things can get hectic pretty quickly. The biggest thing that elevates Luminez above a lot of other block matching puzzle games back when it originally released was how intrinsically linked the gameplay and music are. As mentioned earlier, the timeline that clears your blocks moves in time with the music, but it goes deeper than that. The music is the game. Everything is perfectly in sync, from the timing of the falling blocks to the psychedelic backgrounds. The music is the game's beating heart and pulls all the other elements together, and if you manage to sync yourself to the music too, you will find yourself reaching an almost zen-like state, planning moves in advance and then racking up some truly impressive scores. The graphics have a sheen to them. Everything looks clean, almost metallic at times, and its simple design allows your auditory senses to take center stage and bask in the sublime sounds coming from your Switch. Luminez also makes very good use of HD rumble, with the Joy-Con vibrating in your hands in time with the beat, further immersing you into the game. In terms of gameplay, there are a few different modes to choose from. There is the classic challenge mode. Making progress in this mode will see you unlock new music tracks and skins, which are the different backgrounds, and you can then choose to use these whenever you please. There is also a versus CPU mode which sees you compete against the AI on half a screen each. What is interesting about this mode is that as you earn success, you will earn more of the screen, increasing the size of your playing area and diminishing the size of theirs. Needless to say, when it is you on the receiving end, the tension ramps up fast. As well as these, there is a puzzle mode which tasks you with creating certain shapes mission mode in which you need to clear a set of blocks by a particular criteria and time attack where you play against a set time. Finally, there is two player mode which is local only, there is no online option at all sadly. At £13.49 or $14.99, this game offers a high quality product at a very reasonable price. With six game modes and a variety of songs and skins to unlock, 
The game will last you for a very long time. It absolutely nails the addicting quality needed for a puzzle game to succeed, and the only small gripe I have is the lack of online multiplayer. This is a must own for puzzle fans. Whether you are a Luminaires veteran or new to the series, it's time to join the party. Luminaires gets a switch up score of 90%. So there we have it, that's episode 2 of our review roundup. Glenn and I both hope you'll really enjoy these and please feel free to leave a comment below, like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and as always for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya! Happy gaming everyone!